when Patrick Peterson at halftime says, we just need five touchdowns so we can win this game, like what goes through your head? Really, really in, the, in those situations, you, you kind of have to j just say, don't even look, don't even look up. Like, we got to play one play at a time. We've got to execute. Uh, you know, we all had a hand in, in being down 33 points, uh, certainly. Uh, all phases did not play well um, and, and gave them an opportunity to, to have that kind of lead. Um, at that point, for me, it's just we got to try to get something going. <laughs> Uh, play one play at a time. Don't look at the scoreboard. Let's just play one play at a time. And 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 you can't get. You still have to have some some semblance of normal offense. You know where I give K, uh, Ko Kevin a lot of credit. Just you know it's hard sometimes to just kind of stay in phase and and try to try to run an offense. But I think it it can multiply if you start getting into a just pass happy. We're going to throw it every play and. Um, so stay, stay in the course there. I've been a part of a few games where we came back from big deficits, and, and, and that was always kind of key as far as we've still got a whole half of football to play. You know, let's, let's execute one play at a time and see how this thing goes. Did you allow yourself to look at the scoreboard at one point and go, like, we're close enough to, to do this? Um, well, yeah, when it was, when it was 21, I, you know, I said, hey, you know, we still got a chance here. So... Um, uh, and we, you start to get some momentum, and you, and you start to feel it a little bit. Where, where, hey, you know, we are gonna, if we can get stops, we are gonna have enough possessions at least, you know, with the time time allotted left, where where we do have a shot at this thing if 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 we can go down and score. So, with, uh, Kirk Cousins was talking yesterday about the the knack that Justin Jefferson has to hold on to the ball when he gets hit, you know, and he's getting a lot of vicious hits lately. What are your Thoughts on that? You know, his ability to hold on to the ball and some of the hits he's getting. I think just the the, the focus that he's shown and the toughness. Um, it takes a lot of courage uh, when you know you're going to get hit, uh, to, and and you're leaving the earth. Uh, a lot of times, you know, he's leaving the ground, knowing that you're going to get hurt or hit, and and you'd like to say, well, you're going to get hit either way, so you might as well catch it. But uh, that's a lot easier said than done, uh, and it's just. It's just his toughness and his durability. I mean, he gets up and and uh, he he's got some dings and bruises and like like everyone at this point in the season. But but he's been uh, he's shown that he's very durable as well. Where where he he kind of bounces right back and you know he likes to kind of I think show him how tough he is when he when he gets up and does this immediately after a big hit and says hey you know you can't hurt me kind of kind of mentality. A lot about the dirty work that KJ does for this offense. Just always like to see him have the day that he had. It was it was great. I mean, you know, every time he's been called upon to to make a play, uh, he's done it. He's done it for us. And and to see him uh, through you know through the progressions and in, in the scheme to to get more touches and uh, and have the day that he had and, and be a huge factor in us coming back was. It was really special, I think, for him and and for us. Uh, there, there's an appreciation that we have as coaches, and I know his teammates uh, feel for KJ. You know, for all the things that he does for our offense, and uh, so for him to have that kind of day, uh, no one was surprised, but but really happy for him. And on Justin's touchdown, he sort of talking about it afterwards. He sort of implied that he had been waiting for the right moment for that whip route, and it kind of I don't know, set up that's the right word. <laughs> Stephon Gilmore is not an easy guy to trick, but what goes into that in terms of when the right time to use that is and, and still how much skill is needed in the actual steps to make that route work the way it did? Well, you know, it was a play. I guess it got it got uh, shown uh, Cooper Cup uh, doing it against Tampa yeah. last year. Uh, you know, someone was – was good enough to find that and kind of compare them back to back there. So it was, it was kind of a route that that we had, we had run in the past, uh, where he's running an out cut and then he starts back in and then he. Uh, good story about that route actually is, uh, um, those guys uh, during COVID in LA, Jared Goff and company were practicing at a high school. Jared had it all set up, and. Uh, and they were running a concept where we were kind of running a corner behind it and running, uh, you know, we call it like an Omaha as an outcut with a China. He's coming back in. 
And Cooper just naturally, he got cut off and he kind of just stopped and went back out. And Jared saw it and, and threw it. And, and they're telling us about this. Hey, you know, so that was, uh, that was really Cooper and Jared Goff. I got to give credit credit to them for and other teams have run similar type of things but for us that was kind of the first first iteration of putting something like that in uh, was those guys telling us about hey we were practicing over at the high school uh, during COVID and uh, it came up even yeah yeah he he just kind of did it he got cut off and in that setting you know uh, Cooper probably never would have done that if it was a real game or a practice he would try to force his way in there you know do do what his, his assignment is but uh they were kind of just playing backyard ball and uh and figured that out and and so we we put it in and started working it uh, and had it in with a couple different combinations as far as what the innermost receiver was doing with that concept but uh but we like we like that play as as a progression. You know, we had TJ on kind of an in in breaking cut where if he wins, um, if he wins on a linebacker, we're kind of going fast there. You know, if he wins, and we could we could throw it to him, and if not, you've got a good finishing throw that's kind of safe to the outside uh, uh, to to Justin. And he, what, was, what was Justin's response when you first showed him that route? And I, did you tell him that story of how it first came to be? I, I did not tell him that story, but uh, but you know, Justin, the thing about really NFL players and great players in general is is the fun part for us is you can basically you know with these these types of guys you can put in just about whatever you want and say hey we're going to have you triple move here and and uh, and as long as you explain it and kind of show them. Show them usually on tape, kind of what you're what you're trying to hunt or what hole you're trying to get into. They'll they'll do it once, and sometimes they do it once. You say that's exactly it, or sometimes there's a little tweak, and the second time they've got it. So that's kind of the fun part about scheming some routes. Chris, is there a quality of Kirk's that, that you think is not given enough credit? Uh, I don't know about not getting enough credit. I mean, I I think I think people are giving. Kirk credit when, you know, the team around him and, and, and everyone is obviously we're having success for winning winning football games. We've got 11 wins. Um, and I think it just people are kind of seeing what Kirk has always been. Uh, he's always been a pure passer. He's always been extremely tough in, in the pocket. And uh, and he's always shown a bit shown the ability to Continue to battle uh, when when times are harder. That's when he's sticking in the pocket longer. He's he's holding that thing to the last second, knowing he can make a big play. And and uh, you know, and obviously the fourth quarter comebacks this year have kind of highlighted that. Obviously, none none bigger than than this one in the history of the league. But uh, but I, I think just people are noticing what Kirk has always been. How does he go? What he's doing this year compared to what? Stafford did last year. So, you know, Stafford, obviously, his numbers weren't always great. I mean, he had led the league in interceptions, but played obviously a good, good to great season. Yeah, different players. Um, you know, similar as far as just understanding of the game, uh, preparation, those types of things. Um, Matthew, and I, I think he would say the same thing. Is is was a little more prone to. Kind of take some chances, and, and 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 sometimes you know there were interceptions involved with with those chances, but uh, um, both of them had kind of have a, a great arm talent as far as they can make all the throws. You know, Matthew's doing the no looks, and but but Kirk can make any throw on the field. Um, different skill sets, but obviously finding ways to win the football games. And from that position, how you're in control of those things so many times, uh, you know, on crucial downs where the ball is in your hands and you've got to make the right decisions. I think, I think that's where you could say that they're having a, the most similar of a year is just decision making in crunch time. You know, th those third downs, those red zone, those two minute drives are really where quarterbacks in this league kind of separate themselves. You know, the first, second down stuff where you're you know, play play action pass, and you got a nice clean pocket, and you can survey the field. But it's the 
third downs with exotic pressures and and protection checks and seeing coverage move after the snap on a drop back with a rush coming at me. The things that they have to process at that position is is uh, I'm still impressed by it. The ones that can do it well. That's why there's not many good ones. Wes, I'm sorry to be dense, but just getting back to the, the uh, Cooper Cup. Um, so, what was the original route that in that COVID practice that he was running before he got knocked off? So it was a. Uh, it was like a quick out cut, like a four-step out cut that comes back inside. Okay. So, and, and we have kind of a corner route behind it, so he's kind of... Um, like, and so as back? he was going back, the, the DB jumped it and stepped in front of him, like cut him off, beat him to the spot. Okay. And so he just kind of stopped and went back out, and Jared saw it and put it out there. And, and again, this is all them them just telling us about it. Uh, we said, oh, OK, let's let's check it out. You know, another another good part about it. Let's let's put it in and see what it looks like. They probably didn't have any video of it, right? They're just describing it to you and you figure out. Uh, how to no, do it. they they you know, they wanted to video all that stuff, but it was there were rules involved. There are all kinds of rules with professional players can't got to practice on a high school field. But um, <laughs> But it is what it is. Disavow. <laughs> How much changes when you can get the screen game going, like within a game? Well, 64-yard touchdown is, is pretty good. Um, but absolutely, you know, the, the screen game is something, we, you know, we, we want to keep, keep uh, – Injecting into the into the offense and, and keep improving on because you know you saw we had really three different screens that were at least ten plus plus gains and obviously that big touchdown but uh, just slowing down the rush uh, uh, they're they're kind of breather downs a little bit so to speak for the quarterback where he's not having to deal with the rush the protection I got to know what's you know coverage it's it's times where we can kick stuff out and. Uh, Get it out of his hands quickly. He doesn't have to take another hit and uh, get guys out in space, you know. And, and, and you saw with obviously with Dalvin, and then JJ had a, had a big one at the end to, uh, to get us get us down there uh, closer. So um, definitely something, you know. We were happy to see kind of some improvement in that area. Hey Wes, are you guys doing anything or potentially adjusting any schedules with these dire weather forecasts? Um. Well, I, I, my schedule won't change much, but uh, you know, hopefully these guys just we can get them out of here early enough to where they're not in a blizzard and uh, and then get home safely and and uh, we'll see. You know, if there's if there if people are unable to travel, then we'll have to adjust and Kevin will Kevin will kind of work on that. Uh, you know, organically as it as it happens. But right now, nothing nothing changed. Eddie probably only gets you know, noticed by most people when he messes up. What have you seen in his game that uh, shows signs that he's making progress as a rookie? I just think technique. He, he was he was a physical player. He had athletic ability. He had anchor. He could sit guys down, and he was strong. But uh, I think technique-wise, in his sets, and and particularly in in punching. Um, you know, you saw a lot of times early, and and even throughout the year, it just these things come up. They have to get ingrained in their bodies and brains to just do it naturally. They can't be thinking, "I've got to set, and then I've got to punch, and then," you know, these guys are coming too fast. But uh, he's starting to throw his hands more. He's starting to uh, kind of that last strain to finish and clean the pocket out and run guys by. And really, you saw in the the two point conversion at the end of TJ. Uh, if you watch that, uh, he, I believe he was on Buckner that one, but he kind of it was a great example of straining to run a guy and create space in the pocket, and that that window for Kirk was just completely opened up, and you know it, it was a great example of kind of how all the things are all connected and they all they all matter you know within one play because he just had a clear picture of TJ and TJ did a great job of separating on a linebacker there. Were there any thoughts at all this season whenever he was struggling and you know, looked a little bit overwhelmed? Uh, we had to replace him, or was it just we were, you know stick with a rookie because you're winning? I think I think we're always evaluating all of the positions. You're always saying, is there somebody 
at any position that is, is going to help us win and, and be a better player for us. I mean, you can go across across the line there, and there's guys that didn't have their best games. Um, but uh, ultimately, we feel like he's the best player on our team at that position. Um, and you know, if if you don't feel like someone else, it's great to throw someone out and stick the next guy in. But but uh, you know, we like our depth. But ultimately, we feel like he's he's our best right guard, and and he has continued to improve. Last couple. Can you get him to stop stepping on Kirk's feet? I would like to do that. Um, how do you correct that? I, this might be. I don't think I've ever seen it that many times in a year. Well, there's a combination sometimes. Uh, I think early in the year, he was stepping, stepping a little a little too far down. Um, and sometimes it's it's the split. And then sometimes uh, it's the quarterback's footwork as well. So um, those are all things you know we have to look at. And we obviously can't, can't have that happening. It's just wasted plays like that where we're where we can't even get the playoff. Um. Uh, without Garrett Bradbury in there, how have you guys just been handling that? And what have you seen from Austin at that spot? Austin is about as steady as they come as far as demeanor, um, intelligence, his under, you know, his mastery of the offense and the calls, all the things that the center has to do to communicate to everybody. Um, it's it's been a pretty seamless. You know, we miss Garrett and we and we want Garrett to get well as soon as possible. But uh, everyone in this building has complete confidence in Austin, and uh, I think he's shown that you know in two games that that he can go in there. And, and really, uh, you know, I kind of see him as, as really a starting caliber center in this league um, that, we, that we are fortunate to have as, as our backup. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you.